All right, so I'm going to give this a shot that I'm going to have the visuals being recorded and then the audio separately and they will be combined. Uh, so I have for you in the network folder, I did put um, a version of what I wished uh, had been or I had uh, hoped that you had gotten toward by the end of the day. Uh, in the Campus Mad 2 folder, I have Jason, Practice End, 2018-717. You can copy that to your desktop. We'll take a quick look at the files that are there and uh, reiterate a little bit about what the idea was regarding JSON. So once you get a copy of that file, of that folder that is, you copy the folder and it's got a few elements. Uh, it has all you got. Uh, did you get all of these pictures as part of what you had to do or work with? Okay, so we have these various pictures simply name pick one to nine so okay pictures um, the concept was supposed to be introduced also of, of JSON format uh, so what we can do just to take a quick look at it you can right click the JSON file and edit it in notepad um, it's a very simple type of a file you can open it in brackets if you want but right click it right click the db.json and then edit to notepad plus plus this would, this would be the complete database, so to speak. Um, it's in JSON format, uh, JavaScript object notation. Uh, so what we have is a human readable uh, format to save data. Uh, a database is a collection of information. Uh, so text and images user accounts and all of that that's saved to a database and this uh, format of saving our data here if we see okay we've got various social networks that are being saved and we have a name of a social network a description of it a picture related to it and perhaps an address so notice that for each one of these social networks, they are enclosed in a pair of curly braces. It's one bundle of data. This is like one record in a database because every social network has these elements, name, description, picture, address, URL. We could have much more information related to it, of course. And notice the way that it is. Curly braces encompass one entry, so to speak, then one particular field. Uh, notice how almost everything, in this file at least, has double quotes. Uh, we need double quotes in our data. That's part of the JSON specification. But we've got, here's the name of this network, and there's a colon in between. It's the field, the colon, the data, comma. OK, another field, description colon the data comma another field pick colon the data comma but then on the final uh, the final field notice there's no final comma and back up on YouTube it's the same thing curly braces they open and close right here and each one has these fields separated by commas except the last one so in all of these examples of all of these networks, okay, here's Instagram, the exact same uh, syntax. Curly braces encompass one record, and we've got the various fields in the exact same order every time. It would be a problem if this record said name, pick, URL, description, because all of the fields have to be in the same order. That's another element that's important to note of JSON. The syntax of it is very specific, the curly braces, the commas, etc. But then the order in which you're writing your fields does matter. Uh, in between each uh, record, in between each particular entry in the database uh, is a comma. So commas again here. Here's one particular network bundle, comma. Here's another one, comma. And there are commas on every one of these entries until the final one, which is right here, SoundCloud. There's no final comma. 
So just to write a couple notes here also in another file that I will then put into the network folder. Uh, JSON, JavaScript, object notation, a very specific way to write data, a database. Simple syntax, but must be exact. A record is enclosed in curly braces. Each field is uh, separated by a comma except the last one. So again, the example here, and then we say also uh, each uh, field often data is in double quotes required. And the um, technically the key um, field name is first, then a colon, then the data. So we saw that uh, so we can have here last name colon quotes campos first name colon Victor um, age colon um, 40 comma and then the final one um, uh, city San Diego. No final comma. So that is JSON data. Uh, the, the example data of those social networks is in a file called db.json, .json, um, but the data itself, again, it's human readable. You can invent it. You can define it. Now this is going to then start to be a database of users because then after this the next entry comma with the exact same order last name Jones first name Jessica age uh, something and city I don't know Hell's Kitchen so that's another entry into the database. It's bundled together like that, comma, and so forth, until the final one. So if I do one more, last name, Stark, first name, Tony, age uh, 52, and where does he live at? New York. So um, that's JSON data. Um, that was uh, what should have been at the minimum uh, discussed on the last uh, lecture. Uh, was it around there? Did was that covered in that sort of way? Um, okay. Does it make further any? Do I need to explain any more on like the the way it's written like that? Does it make sense there? Okay. Well, the other half of the things perhaps was uh, retrieving the data. To display it on screen. Um, we saw here in the example, this one that I'm showing at least, there's a picture in the database as well, but it's not the raw data of the picture. A picture, of course, is zeros and ones and all of that, but it's not the actual raw data in the database. It is a link to a location uh, or a path to where the picture is. So imagine that this database is on a server, and the picture is uploaded somewhere into the server, maybe a folder on the server called, you know, slash pictures, slash 2018, slash social, slash pic05 png. 
So you don't actually store the raw data that makes up the, the image. You store a, a path or a location to the image. You can then retrieve it and display it. The retrieving and the displaying was the other half of the, of the lecture. So in my example here, I have uh, this index HTML, if you open that one in Notepad as well. This is probably a variation of what you did in the class, but both the great thing about programming is that many, many um, roads lead to the same location, meaning you can do things in a variety of different ways as long as you get the, the right result, it's right. Uh, if you run this in Firefox, Chrome gets a little cranky that it's loading a database that it's not coming off of a server, so it'll give you a, a message. Just uh, run the index file in Firefox and then open up the console, F12. Then I'll explain the code briefly. So there's a button, so sh uh, pick a network. Uh, when I pick it, uh, I see the picture, I see the, descript the name of the social network. If you hover your mouse over the, um, the picture, uh, the description pops up, and then the, the URL is embedded in the, in the text. So all of this data that I showed over here in the, in the actual database file is retrieved and processed and displayed on screen via HTML, CSS, and or JavaScript, which I'll explain in a moment. But the result is then that every time I click the button, a different social network <coughs> picture appears, a different social network name, and its description, and its link appears. So the output that's happening on the, um, dis, uh, on the developer's console, the usual that we've got a certain function is running, uh, there are various objects, uh, nine uh, social networks saved in the database. This is other stuff here that uh, maybe didn't get to, but that was OK. Retrieving user information, which is the same idea as the network. But every time I click that, I get a different uh, random result. The way that's happening, if you look at the HTML, it's uh, fully commented, uh, but basically there is the main body of the website is completely simple. There's a heading, a button, and a div. The main magic of it happens in JavaScript. Uh, JSON is JavaScript object notation, meaning we can write JavaScript code uh, to make sense of the data. And then we use AJAX, which is a way to retrieve the data from a server, from this file, from someplace else, from a database. Uh, so here it sets up the usual. This didn't have. This example doesn't have jQuery. Uh, I guess you guys use jQuery. You connect it over to the jQuery library and use jQuery. Uh, did you remember doing that? No. Okay. If you didn't, that's fine. Um, here's the classic way: document .get element by ID. We're going to create a an object of the button and the div. Okay, we've done that before. Something new. We're creating a data connection, which will be a way to connect from this file connecting to another file, another location. A function that will do something, and then past that, an event listener, an, an on-click. So once we click the button, run this function, get social. So this is a variation of the JavaScript we've done before. It's the plain old JavaScript. We've done jQuery before. And what's happening inside of the actual function, again, you can read the comments, but the big idea is uh, there's going to be a, a connection opened to a file. Well, all of the database file, db.json, we're going to get a connection to the file, basically. Uh, override MIME type, don't worry about that. OK, we send it. We say, OK, let's connect. Here's the file. Let's connect to the database. Well, what happens is once the data loads, we need to process it because it's just raw data. In the JSON uh, file here, it's just, it's just raw data. It doesn't have uh, too much meaning. I can see that there's a field of name and a field of picture and description. But in order for us to use it in the HTML, we need to process the data. In this case, line 39 is doing that. We're parsing. We're converting the raw data into JSON uh, data into data that is understandable by 
the by the software by by JavaScript some console output showing okay what is the data we loaded specifically what is the name of the zero width entry into the database what is the age of the first entry to the database what is the URL to the second entry in the database these numbers start from zero so you saw that when I did the first one over here the zero width entry Victor uh, from my database is right here Victor here is uh, 0, Janet is 1, Luke is 2, Maria is 3. So we start counting from 0, not from 1. If I say give me the entry number 1, it's actually going to give me Janet, not Victor. Question? So if most grammatically you don't have to place a 0 next to Victor or 1 next to Janet, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Exactly. It knows to start at 0. It's just programmed. That's the way it is. Most computer languages, they start from 0. So yes, we always start counting from zero. Up here on the database, it's the same sort of thing, that the social network portion of the database. The zero width social network is YouTube. The first social network is Vine. The second is Twitter. Obviously, OK, zero, one, two. But it's the first one, the second one, the third one. That's the thing you just have to kind of memorize and get used to. We start counting from zero when we deal with sequential data. And that's what this is saying here, the console output. Give me the name field of the zero width entry in the users portion of the database. Give me the age of the first um, entry in the users portion of the database. Give me the URL of the second entry in the networks portion of the database. And you see that in general, right here, there's a networks section of my data, uh, which starts here and then goes all the way down here following the red line right here. There's then another section of the database regarding users, and it has its own chunk of data here. This is a little bit more advanced than I just said about curly braces, because uh, here we've then got a square bracket. This is like two separate databases sort of in one file. In one file we've got a database related to networks. It's still the curly br it's still the quotes, the colon, but then a square bracket. And between these square brackets is all of these nine entries of the networks. Comma. Quotes for the second database, so, so to speak, in my file colon, square brackets, close square brackets. So that's a whole, then, portion of the database. And all of the data, however, is encompassed in one big pair of curly braces, back to the beginning. So does that make sense here? Give me the name of the zero, of the zero width entry in my user's portion of the database. Uh, does that kind of make sense? Are there any questions on that? Further, what's happening? OK, well, this uh, is connecting to the database. It's preparing the data. It's parsing it. It's preparing it to be used. Well, to display it on screen, um, a few things are happening. A, a, random, a random number is being generated uh, because I want to pick from one of the nine social networks in the database. So we've covered random numbers before, and this creates a random number based on the total number of networks in the database file. So that creates a random number uh, between 0 uh, and uh, 8, right? Because we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 networks. Um, we want to display on screen. We want to write HTML into that div on screen. Well, we're building here. A, um, a div that will display the network. The image tag with source equal to the picture that we randomly selected in the network portion of the database. 
plus a title attribute of the image tag equal to the description of the chosen so random social network from the network location end of the image tag break paragraph and then um, an a tag to create a link href equal to the uh, address the URL of the random social network in the networks location of the database target blank and then the name of the social network to display on screen so we will do this again uh, once we start to work on our database in CBDB but perhaps this is the big confusing part about how are we displaying it how are we taking that data and actually processing it to display this every time you click it there's a different network we will cover that again in our CBDB project but it's it's uh, grabbing the appropriate piece of data and simply displaying it in an HTML block and then rendering that on screen converting it from JavaScript to HTML on screen yes why an index HTML of like 27 Say you could do in uh, the second argument, you could do HTTP something, you could do like a, like a CGI something that creates the DB that use on fly, right? It could be more complex than this, yes, definitely. Right now, we're connecting from an HTML file to a JSON file, but yes, this get connection could connect to something more complex, some CGI script to do even more, some PHP script. To have it be dynamic and such yes it could connect to some resource online as well this is very common nowadays the reason why we're covering JSON is because it's very common to have something like this twitter.com or something more like uh, api.twitter.com slash tweets all of these websites nowadays that have these databases often expose their database to some degree for you to access them all of these tweets that are getting sent out for the last 10 years, you can access them. Twitter has a way for you to connect to its database. It's not as easy as what I typed here, of course, but they give us a way to connect to their database, and it's going to give us a portion of the database in JSON format. Facebook as well. Uh, YouTube, all of these networks that have huge databases are going to let us check part of their database in JSON format. So if we kind of understand JSON, we can pull data out of these networks and then do some HTML and JavaScript stuff to them and display it on screen. Yes? So um, you said that JSON was the format to view the data. JSON is a format to store the data. Store the data. Yes. So is that what it is? That's the only thing that you're just storing everything from Java and from HTML? That's its only purpose? Um, remove half of what you said it is a way to store data yes but not particularly it's it's not you know storing the HTML or the or, or the JavaScript it's just storing the data see how I have an entry of name YouTube wow, an entry of pin. no it's the data it's the data not commands it's just the raw data a person's last name a person's first name a person's height age and such the data there's no commands plain raw text data the HTML and the JavaScript is happening in the HTML file to process the data this data one of the things about JSON is that it's very simple and in a sort of a way dumb it's just data it's just text it has no meaning until it gets processed by the JavaScript to display it as HTML something visible on screen so that's one of the reasons that JSON is very popular nowadays. It's just a simple way to save data. What you do with it, then that's the complex part. That's the writing the JavaScript to load the data, process the data, uh, uh, create the HTML to then display the data. Yes? And that's HTML line 39. Mm -hmm. um, you were returning the data from a, from like a server, that, that command is just going to ignore all HTML. Just going to just 
just going to just find the JSON database to ignore all the HTML tags? This um, this goes back a few steps. Uh, some of these lines you cannot really remove them out of context. Let me jump back a moment. The reason that JSON parse here is working is because we're connecting to a JSON formatted file. If we were connecting to a different kind of a file, an HTML file, a CGI file, we might not simply be able to do JSON parse. So this is assuming we are connecting to a JSON formatted file or location. We can then parse the data so that it understands it as JSON data. Does that was that your question? Does that answer? Well, when you go, if you if you did this on a, like a regular web page, mm -hmm. would it return like all these HTML headers and stuff, like the title and stuff like that? No, it, it shouldn't because our point here is that we are trying to connect um, to the data, and uh, we're we're specifically. Once it loads, we're specifically looking at the text <clears throat> that was returned, not the headers, you know, not the location of it on the server. We well, have. Yes. Hmm? Yeah, but this is going to be, it's going to fit on all the other stuff, right? And there's, there's a JSON formatted entry in that, that file that gets returned. It's just going to just parse the JSON in the file. Just the JSON data in the file, yeah. It's not going to look at the headers or the file location or anything like that. So um, connecting to a file, loading the data, processing the data, displaying the data. We're going to do that again more in depth when we get into CBDB, but I just want to reiterate a version of what you covered last time. And whatever you covered last time still applies. This is the version of what I would have ended up with if I was doing the lecture, so keep a copy of this file if you want to look through it and compare what you did in the class. Uh, I'm going to move on to CBDB in a moment, but any questions about this file or what was covered in the last class or anything regarding JSON and such, if it still doesn't quite make sense, it'll make more sense as we apply this in our CBDB project. Yes? Is Yes, so we have, that's exactly it. We have here, uh, we are parsing the data. We are taking data at the moment. This is technically a, a raw string of data, sequential data. It's just dumb text. It has no meaning. So in the JavaScript here, we're saying let's parse it. Let's turn it into an object so we can check the, the name property of this object. The opposite, yes, would be json.stringify to simplify it from an object back to raw data. So uh, that would be a way to save data back into the database, perhaps. So parsing and stringifying uh, are two sides of the same coin, yes. Any other questions?